All right, today we're going to construct a scatter plot, but then we're also going to interpret that scatter plot. We're going back to our knowledge of linear relationships, where y equals mx plus b. So when scatter plots demonstrate a linear relationship, a straight line can be used to show the general pattern of the data. A trend line, or we often call it the line of best fit, is a straight line that should lie as close as possible to the points of data in the scatter plot. Now, what we want to know about these trend lines is that they are going to fit the data. So it cannot be above the data or below the data. It has to go directly through the middle of that data. So we're going to look at these um, first four problems, and we're going to determine whether or not that line that was drawn is a line of best fit. And just think of it exactly as those words are, best fit. So does this line truly give the best fit of the data? If the data points are look like they're positive and linear, but the line drawn is negative. So no, this would not be a line of best fit. How about number two? The points are scattered. It looks like it's a negative um, line. And the points are pretty strong in the correlation, and it's linear. So I would say that that line that is drawn is a very good representation of that data. There's points above the line, and there are equally points below the line. So that would be a yes. Now what about the next one? The line, and then all the points below it. That is not a line of best fit because it does not truly go through the data points. So that would be a no. And then number four, the line is below all of our data points. That line should have been up a little bit more and drawn through. So this also would be a no. So now you are going to remember that you can choose any two points and set them up as a ratio of rise over run to find the slope, which is m. We also can look at the y-axis to find our y-intercept, which is b. And then you are going to put it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. All right, so these three lines have been drawn for you. We need to find the slope, the y-intercept, and the equation. So we know that the slope, and I'm going to use the very bottom here, m is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So once again, this is x and this is y. Now I'm going to find two points on my line that I can easily find the slope for. And I have one right here. And I'm going to use this one right here on my line. Now if you recall, we can connect those points. Now this is falling down, so I know it's negative. So my change in y is my up and down, and that's going to be 1. And my change in x would be 1, 2, 3. So my slope is negative 1 over 3. And what is my B? My B is always on the Y-intercept, and that looks like it's right here at 8. So my equation, Y equals MX plus B. Y equals negative 1 third X plus 8. So you are identifying two points on the line that you can easily um, connect to find the slope. Number six, I'm going to choose that point right there. And I am going to choose over 8 and up 200 right here. So I'm going to combine. I'm going to make a, my triangle here. And I'm going to count 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my M is equal to the change in Y over the change in X. And that's going to be 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 over 2. 
Where does it start? What is my B? My B starts right here at 0, 100. So Y equals MX plus B. Y equals 1 half X plus 100. Okay, my last one, identify two points that you can clearly see. So I can see this point here, which would be 1 and 35, right there. And my other one would be over 3 and up, right here. I'm going to go ahead. Now I know it's negative. M is equal to the change in Y over the change in X. So I know that my change in Y is 1, 2, 3, 4, and my change in X is 2. So that's negative 4 over 2, which is equal to negative 2. My B, where does it start? Starts up here. Now remember the scales counted by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So y equals mx plus b. y equals negative 2x plus 45. So you are going to be finding an equation from a trend line by connecting two points that you can easily identify. Connecting those two points, making our triangle, counting them, and finding the change in y over the change in x.